we are going to do is look at the example that we had last time and expand upon it. And we're going to work through the notion of um, what it means to take some code and to improve it, to, to make it better than, than what it was before. So um, we'll take a look uh, at the code that we had, sort of see if there's any questions with what we had. And I really honestly don't remember where we left off, so we'll, we'll look at it together and we'll fill in the blanks. Then we'll start looking at improving the code. In other words, taking code that already works and make it um, do its job better. Um, before we do that, we'll define what it means to do your job better in terms of code. You know, what makes one piece of code um, better than another piece of code. At any rate, we'll start by looking at that. Studio, take a look, and remind ourselves exactly where we're at, and talk about where we need to go. Let me rephrase that. We're not going to talk about where we need to go. That that invites a whole range of responses that are off topic. So, <laughs> <laughs> so instead, we'll say what we need to do to change this. So let's go and open it, and we'll run it to make sure we have the behavior down, and then we'll start looking at, at the guts of it. So let's go in here, file, open, website, temperature. One thing that, that you need to be sure of is you need to open the folder that contains the web config file. Um, that sometimes gets confusing for students, and sometimes gets confusing for me if I'm not if I'm grading and I'm not really paying attention. Um, if, for example, you zip up and you have a couple folders deep, if I open up like the folder above the folder that has a web config file, uh, then then it's, the app won't run won't run right. So you have to open the folder that the app is really in. That is the folder that contains the web config file. Let's look and see what we have here. We have our default page on which we have Text box for temperature, drop down for conversion type, that is Fahrenheit to centigrade, a button to sort of set the whole thing in motion, um, and then we have a label for the results. So we're pretty far along. About the only thing I might want to add is formatting the output. <coughs> All right. Um, let's look at the code behind for this. And in the code behind, we check to see if it's valid. Does anyone recall why we need that line of code? We need it sort of for a specific purpose. Well, it makes sense if we don't, if it isn't valid, we don't want to do the calculation, but yes. So that it won't send it to the server? Well, it's already at the server if it's so in this code. It won't send it back or stop it somehow. Okay. Really, the purpose of this is if JavaScript is enabled, it won't make it back to the server. Okay, so if JavaScript is enabled, those validations are rendered as client-side JavaScript and Therefore, the submitting back to the server will be canceled, will stop, all right? If JavaScript is not enabled, that 
that's really the purpose of this line of code, because if JavaScript is not enabled, then obviously client-side JavaScript to keep it from submitting to the server can't possibly run. Therefore, no matter what, it runs on the server. Fortunately for us, those validation controls also fire off on the server. So if, client, if JavaScript's enabled, they'll fire off on the client. Regardless of if it's enabled or not, they'll also file off, uh, fire off on the server. So if JavaScript is disabled, the controls still fire off on the server, and if there's a problem, it keeps us from doing the calculation. So really, the, the purpose of this, if I was going to summarize, is to keep us from doing the calculation if the validation fails and um, JavaScript is disabled. How does that know that that's what you're asking them about? When you say if is valid, if what is valid? Well, is valid is a built-in property of the page. And is valid is a, is a uh, property of the page which is true if all the validations passed and it's false if one of the validations fails. So it's only used for validation? Yeah, it, it's used to determine whether the validation controls found a problem or not. So yeah, that's a property of the page. Remember, everything, and we're, we're going to be talking more about objects and classes, maybe later today, if not, then definitely on Thursday. But um, all these things, even the page, is an object. All right? The page, the code behind are all objects. What are objects? Well, a simplistic definition is objects are things that have properties or characteristics and methods. These are built-in uh, uh, objects. These are built-in classes. These are classes in the framework that have been provided to us. All right? We haven't created them. They have built into them certain properties already. All right? And most of the .NET programming we've done so far is taking those built-in controls and accessing those built-in predefined properties. You know, that's what we're doing here. We're looking at that drop-down object and accessing the selected value property. Well, here, we're saying is valid. Now, we don't have the name of the object is valid because it's relating to this object itself, which is the page. So we could say if this is valid and it would work as well. Or we could probably even say if page <coughs> is valid and it would work as well. All of those are saying the same thing. It's looking, it's interrogating the is valid property of this particular page. That is valid property will either be true or false. True if all the validations passed or if there's no validations, I suppose. False if uh, any of the validations fail. All right. The validation again fire off both client side and server side, which normally isn't an issue. They'll fire off client side if it's not valid. It won't make it to the server, right? If it is valid, they'll fire off again. All right, and presumably it will still pass, right? If the if the control was valid when it was validated on the client side, it's going to be valid when you validate it on the server side, right? You know, microseconds later, all right? However, um, <clears throat> if JavaScript is disabled, then this will fire off on the server side and it will catch any of the errors. And simply by saying if is valid, that means, hey, we're only going to do this code if it passed validation. If it didn't pass validation, something's wrong with our input. Therefore, these calculations will explode if we try and do them. All right? And if you remember in this case, um, I forget exactly what validators we had, but we had a required field validator, uh, definitely. And I think we had a validator to make sure we put in the right type of data. We could also put in a range validator if we wanted to make sure that it was a reasonable value for temperatures. You know, if you're talking about, you know, temperatures on Earth, you know, what's the coldest it would ever get, you know, 40 below, you know, um, 100 below, I don't know, what's the coldest it would ever get, to the hottest it would get, you know. All right.
What I want to do now is I want to format the output a little bit better. All right. Um, any questions about what we have so far, by the way? Let's, let's format the output a little bit better to give a nice message. Because right now we're just plopping the... Um, we're just plopping the um, value, the converted value in that label. Let, let's give a nice message that explains what actually the results mean. So I'm going to dim a string for results. And I'll say something like this. I need to say as string, which I forgot to do the first time. All right. So I'll say str results. Equals. And I'll say this is doing the first one's doing Fahrenheit to centigrade. So I will say. I'm going to say whatever the input temperature is in Fahrenheit is so and so degrees in centigrade. And I'll do a similar thing if the conversion goes the other direction. And when I'm all done, I won't. I'll use a string to put in the text. So I'll just say str results. All right. Let's go and run this now to see what we have. Then we'll take a little closer look at that instruction, just in case it's not clear exactly what that instruction is doing. So I can go and put in here. After enabling intranet options, whatever those are, I could put in 32 degrees, let's convert Fahrenheit to centigrade, and click convert, and it will tell me that 32 Fahrenheit is 0 degrees centigrade, which it is. If I go the other way around and type in 100 and convert centigrade to Fahrenheit, it will tell me that 100 degrees centigrade is 212 Fahrenheit. All right. Let's look at that instruction. All right. Couple things that I might be able to get get away without not, without doing a CSTR to convert to a string. It might figure it out because I don't have option explicit. It might do that uh, implicit conversion, but I'm going to be safe and convert it to a string. That's what the CSTR double temp says. It says, okay, I have a double, I have a numer uh, numeric value, let's make it into a string. I then have a plus sign. I then have enclosed in quotes the phrase F is. In other words, degrees Fahrenheit is. Plus, when you're dealing with strings, it's simply concatenating them. So I'll simply take the first string, add the second string onto the end of it, add the third string, and then the fourth string. <clears throat> One thing that confuses some students is when to put things in quotes and not. All right? um, things in quotes are literals. In other words, it will be exactly that. All right? In other words, I want my output to say space F is space. I want those exact literal letters. That is why I have those enclosed in quotes. All right? I don't have double temp, in uh, temp enclosed in quotes or any of the other stuff 
because I don't want those exact letters. I don't want CSTR DBL temp in my output. I want the value of the variable called double temp converted to a string. So I want some operation to be performed, or I want the value of a variable to be included. And when you have that, you do not include stuff in quotes. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, notice that I have this, this big string of the results is made up of four little strings, and there's a plus sign between each of the little strings. Value of a variable, so that's not enclosed in quotes, plus the literal, f is, plus the next literal, uh, the next variable rather, plus the next literal. And that's if I'm doing Fahrenheit to centigrade. If I'm doing centigrade to Fahrenheit, then the, the, va the values are flipped. In other words, what's in uh, DBL temp is the value in centigrade, and what's in DBL result is the value in Fahrenheit. Questions about this? Now, one thing I just want to I want to do real quickly is I want to I want to emphasize that these .NET controls are like fully programmable, which means that we can change really anything about the page that we want to um, simply by accessing the right properties. So again, we had a little bit of discussion before class where we discussed whether I was a mean person or not. Mm -hmm. And the consensus was that that's still up in the air. Mm -hmm. All right? But if I don't answer a question directly, like how do you do this, how do you do that, it's because part of the skill in becoming a .NET developer is, first of all, figuring out where I need to look. The, the question in particular was, um, how do you mask a password? How do you mask a text box so that... Who doesn't know how to do that? Yeah. <coughs> Pardon me? Who doesn't know, yeah, who do doesn't know how to do that? Yeah. Um, and and uh, the answer almost always is going to be there's a property there. All right? Okay. Fair enough. Well, first of all, where? All right? In this case, it was pretty obvious. The property is going to be somewhere on that text box. In other instances, it might not be quite as obvious. But in this case, it was pretty obvious it's going to be somewhere in the text box. And if you look through, it's pretty self you know, if you look through and, 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 and go through those, um, you can discover what the property is text mode. All right? So let me describe what I want to do. And um, what I want to do is if the temperature is... Less, if the temperature in Fahrenheit is less than 32 degrees, I want to display a picture of snow. All right? If the temperature is above 72 degrees Fahrenheit, I want to display a picture of the sun. If it's between 32 and 72, I don't want to display any picture. All right? So that's what I want to do. All right? That, that's, that's the code that I want to write. I want to have three possibilities, and I'm only going to be looking at Fahrenheit temperatures in this regard. All right? If the temperature is less than 32 I want to, uh, uh, degrees, I want to display snow. If the temperature is greater than 72 degrees, I want to display sun. If the temperature is between 32 and 72, I don't want to do anything. Take a minute to figure out how you think you do that. Why well, look for some nice Creative Commons licensed photos of snow and uh, sun. So take a minute, think through how you do that. search to turn off the projector. AP 
page worth of images based on the result of sunny, and not one of them shows the sun shining. <laughs> Nothing particularly bad if I would have left the, the projector on, but I have not yet seen the sun shining. Watch the sun. Yeah, we'll do that. Apparently, a lot of people have cats named Sunny. <laughs> okay. All right, here, here, finally. Oh, I'm going to go to advanced search. You folks should be thinking about this as I'm searching. Any thoughts on how I'm going to do this? Temperatures below 32 and snow that visible equals fall. True. Okay. What is snow? What What is snow in that in that sentence? Uh, image you put into the form. Okay. So, if I was going to do this, what would be the first thing that I would do? And then, uh, how many images would I put in the form? Two. Okay. All right. One way I could do this is I could put two images into the page. I could put a snow image and I could put a sun image. All right? Let's do that. Let's follow that path. And then, I would set them both initially to be invisible. All right? I would then, based on the temperature, show the one that was visible and then go from there. Show the one that should be visible. So let's go in and let's I have two images. I believe they're called Snow JPEG and Sun JPEG. They are. Let's go in here in the Visual Studio and We'll probably do this a couple of ways. Toolbar, I can go and I can add an image. Alright. And in fact, I'm going to add two of them. Now, we had talked about this before. I added an ASP.NET control of image. 
So if I look at the source here, I see that those two are ASP image. I could add an HTML image tag, and by saying run at equals server, I could make it an ASP.NET control. But I generally don't do that. If I'm going to do something from scratch, I'm going to use the ASP.NET controls because that's what they were built for, right? And they're bound to work out better and be more flexible and so on. Yes? Do you mind? Uh, oh, thank you. I was able to impress Paul Norad, by the way. I showed him the first video we had of this class. Uh, and he didn't realize that you could make the screen bigger either. <laughs> so I was happy. I looked smart. <laughs> All right. So I have these two ASP.NET image tags, and I'm going to pop them in that div just so that they line up right. Now, I can go in here and I can say of these images, one of the properties is the URL of the image, and I can make the URL of image one, snow.jpg, and I can make the URL of image two, sun. Dot JPEG. I am going to change the image uh, name, this image ID, to uh, image snow and image sun. And what should the visibility of these be set to initially? False or, or hidden or, or whatever. Uh, true, yeah, and false. So I'll set both of these false. All right. And then in my code behind, I can go in and say, I'm going to declare another variable for double F. And if I'm converting Fahrenheit to centigrade, then double F equals double temp. Else, double F equals double results. Now, why did I do that? Why did I create another variable for um, temperature and Fahrenheit, and I populate it one of two ways. Why couldn't I, you know the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write some if statements, all right? Um, why would I do that? Why would I just put the if statement here to look at double temp, and then the if statement down here to look at double result? Why create a second variable? Any thoughts? Well, how many lines of code is this? It's one. What's the, how many lines of code are the if statement going to be? If statement is probably going to be um, you know, five or six. Would I rather set a variable and then have a block of code that uses that variable that I only have to put in once or duplicate that same lines of code five or six, or, you know, a, a couple times? And what if I make it more complicated, more nuanced, that maybe over 80 it shows a, per, a picture of someone, you know, on a beach. Or if it's over 100 it shows, you know, uh, a person, um, you know, sweating or whatever. All right. I wouldn't want to duplicate that chunk of code in two places. So instead I set a variable and I do that. Now, in a minute, there might be a better way to do it than that, but, but we'll see. All right. So I can say if double F 